What's up everyone, I'm Lockouts, and in this video we're going to be talking about NVIDIA graphics cards, how to optimize them, what settings give you the best performance, and what you're going to have to test for yourself based on your own PC so that you can get the best frames you can get within all the games you play. Check this out. Take your mouse and click the button, won't you subscribe to me? Lockouts, providing the content that you see. I'm bitching to stimulate in your mind, one minute at a time. All right, everybody, jumping right into this. The first thing that you're going to do is go to your desktop. You're going to use your mouse. You're going to right click on your desktop. You're going to click the NVIDIA control panel icon that you can see right here that pops up in the box. When you select that, you're going to get the NVIDIA control panel that's going to pop up. It looks like this. I'm sure everybody knows what this looks like by now. Very first thing that you're gonna start off with is right here, adjust image settings with preview. Uh, I recommend going and doing this because this is just gonna make some other settings be turned off that's within this that you're just not gonna touch. So go ahead and click the little first bot, uh, dot right here. It says use my preference, emphasizing, and grab this slider right here and slide it all the way over to performance. After you do that, click the apply button. When you click the apply button, you're then going to go back to the middle button and click use the advanced 3D image settings. And then you're going to click this link right here that says manage 3D settings. When you guys get over here into this setting, you guys are going to use image sharpening based on your own graphics card. If you've got a 1070, a 1080, a 2080, go ahead and turn this on a little bit. If you're playing 1080 uh, um, resolution, this is going to help your image be scaled a little bit better so that you don't have some jaggedy lines and you'll get a little bit tighter of a, uh, a picture that's on your screen. If you are running like a 1050, a 1060, or the equivalent for AMD or something like that, uh, even though this is not an AMD video, but if you're running the equivalency for something like that and they have image sharpening over there on AMD site, definitely turn it off. Don't even use it if you have a lower end graphics card because you're going to take a performance hit from this. So it's not even worth it for you to try to sharpen up the image for 5, 10, 15, 20 frames or, you know, 5%, 10%, however much it might take for however much you might sharpen it. Um, first thing that you guys are going to recognize here is that you can turn this on or just turn it off. You can also force GPU scaling that's within this. So do not use GPU scaling. You don't want the GPU to automatically be scaling this and, and sharpening it. Um, it's, a, it's going to do it anyways, okay? Uh, I have this set at 0 0.40 and then ignore film grain is at 0.19. I only use this just in a very low, low setting. I don't use this in a very high setting. Uh, ambient inclusion, you want this to be off. Anisotropic filtering, off. Anti-aliasing FXAA, you want that to be off. Anti-aliasing gamma correction, you want that to be on. Anti-aliasing mode, you want that off. The next two are gonna be grayed out for you because we do not have a setting se selected up here, so don't worry about them. CUDA GPUs, you want that to be selected for all. DSR factors, you want off. Uh, low latency mode. Now, I have this brought up right here in Notepad so that you guys could read this for yourself. If you guys use G-Sync and you have uh, your display using, or, or if your graphics card is scaling to your display, the way that you're going to do that is uh, to get your display to um, have scaling so that your graphics card is not doing the scaling, that'll actually reduce input lag slightly if you're on lower end graphics cards. Uh, you will enable G-Sync on your monitor and you will turn it off with an NVIDIA control panel. Okay, so you're gonna go to your uh, NVIDIA control panel and then you're gonna find where it says prefer maximum refresh rate. And this is where you're going to be able to select where it says application control, the highest available. You want the highest available on this at all times. And then when you turn on uh, FreeSync uh, or G-Sync that is on your monitor, when you enable that, there will be right here where preferred re refresh rate is, there will be an option to enable or disable it within NVIDIA control panel. You want to turn it on on your monitor and you want to turn it off within NVIDIA control panel. By doing that, you guys will be able to set your uh, desktop size and position, scaling, all that stuff right here where it says perform scaling on GPU, you will get an option that says your monitor, so you won't have your graphics card do any scaling. Even though you, you select a no scaling option, we'll move on to that later. But this is for if you are running G-Sync and you guys are incurring, uh, incurring a little bit of lag or you feel like there's a little bit of lag that's there, go ahead and uh, turn on NVIDIA or G-Sync within your monitor and disable it within your NVIDIA control panel. And then try it both with it off, okay? and see how that goes. It's gonna to have to be tested per basis on your guys' computer. Now, if you use G-Sync on your monitor and you're, if you use G-Sync, if you're just using G-Sync period, okay, 
on your monitor, you want to enable it and in NV NVIDIA control panel, you want to turn it on. Now this is the settings it's going to, depending on if you guys are getting stutters, micro stutters, you're getting all kinds of different kind of jumpiness that's or uneven frame pacing. Um, when you have G-Sync that's enabled, that is because your monitor has got crazy rapid fluctuations in the FPS that you guys are pushing and it's up clocking and down clocking very fast and you guys are incurring micro stuttering. Now, the way that you guys are going to have to test this is going to be based on your guys' computer. Okay, so you guys are going to be testing this per basis on your guys' computer, and if you guys are running G-Sync, like I said, and you guys are getting stutters, you're going to want to take low latency mode, and you're going to want to test it with it off, you're going to want to test it with it on, and you're going to want to test it with it on ultra, okay? Um, if you turn it off, there's no latency, the game is just going to render as many frames as it wants to and queue them up for your graphics card. If you turn the setting on, it's going to limit your pre-rendered frames to one so that your graphics card has some back buffer and it's not working all the time, just rendering all these crazy frames for no reason. It'll limit the, the back buffer to one frame and that maybe will help you for micro stutters, jittery and latency and stuff like that. And if you guys put it on ultra, this is going to limit it to where as soon as a frame arrives, it's going to try to display it that's on your uh, monitor. Uh, you may in, in encounter a little bit of tearing with this, even though you do have G-Sync on, it's going to, I find ultra mode to be a little weird with my Ryzen and uh, my 1080. Uh, what I do is I just turn this off and I don't even use G-Sync. I just let my, uh, I, I just cap my frames with uh, Rivia Tune Statistics Server. The next thing that you guys are going to want is um, for your max frame rate, you're going to want this to be off. This is where you're going to be able to limit frames. It's within your graphics card. NVIDIA has a pretty shitty frame limiter. It has gotten better over the years, you know, um, but I, if you're going to use anything, use the game's in cap limiter. It's going to be better than anything else. If you don't want to use the game's in cap limiter, I'll have a link down below for a, a program that's called RTSS, Rivia Tune Statistics Server, and it is a frame pacing and a frame limiter program. It does both in conjunction with each other. It should help you guys out a little bit too. Uh, the next thing that you guys want is multi-sample at uh, MFAA, turn that off. Open GL rendering GPU, whatever your guys' graphics card is, go ahead and select that there. Power management mode, prefer maximum performance. You want that to be max performance on that one. Definitely make sure that you are in checking maximum performance. The next thing that you guys want is preferred refresh rate. You want that to be the highest available no matter what. If you are running G-Sync or not, make sure that the highest available refresh that you have is on turned on shader cache you want that to be on texture filtering anisotropic sample optimization you want this to be on texture filtering negative lod bias um this is going to be have to be tested per your guys's computer and your graphics card you can set this to allow for more performance you can set it to clamp uh, it just depends on your guys's graphics card one setting will give you a little bit better of a performance and a little bit better visual fidelity so just test it back and forth again i have a ryzen 7 and a gtx 1080 windforce oc C graphics card and I have it to allow on mine. Uh, texture filtering uh, quality, you want this to be on high performance. Texture filtering, trilinear optimization, you want that on. Threaded optimization, you want on. Triple buffering, off. V-Sync, off. Never use V-Sync unless you guys are having absolute horrendous, horrendous tiering within your games. And if you're using G-Sync and V-Sync together, Definitely go back into your low latency mode setting and turn your low latency to ultra. Anytime that you are running G-Sync and V-Sync together, you want your low latency mode to be on ultra no matter what. It is going to prioritize your frames and your fight in latency like a SOB right there when you have both of those enabled. Um, if you are using G-Sync, don't ever use V-Sync. If you do end up using both of them though, make sure that you use low latency mode, turn it to ultra. And for the very last one, virtual reality pre-rendered frames, set that to one. 
Moving along now to configure surround phys X. Um, if you guys are spanned like triple displays, then you can span your displays with surround with this. Uh, if you guys uh, find or go over here to the phys X settings, instead of auto select, do not use your CPU, use your graphics card for open GL renderings. So mine is a GeForce GTX 1080. Again, whatever your graphics card is, select that there. Change resolution. This is where you're going to set your refresh rate. I have an MG248Q ASUS 144Hz 1MS monitor with a TN panel that's in it, okay? Um, I run it on 1920 by 1080. This is where you'll select your refresh rate for 144 hertz. If you scroll down, it says apply the following settings for default color. You don't want to use this. You would like to use the NVIDIA control settings. NVIDIA has a lot more vibrance and and uh, visual fidelity within their color settings. So use NVIDIA con uh, color settings, and then you want desktop color depth to be 32 bit. You want the output color depth to be 8 BPC. You want the output dynamic range to be full. You want the output color format to be RGB. Next one is adjust desktop color settings. Again, you do not want to have the first box selected here. Make sure that, uh, I, we'll, we'll start with this. Make sure that you guys select whatever your monitor is. I have two monitors hooked up right now. So your main display that you're going to be gaming on, use the NVIDIA control settings. Make sure that this says all channels and then you can adjust the gamma for the games right here, the brightness on your desktop right here. And now digital vibrance, this is where you're going to get uh, brighter purples, reds, pinks, oranges, nice, great visual fidelity. If you turn this up too high, you're gonna start seeing craziness. Well, like blues will turn purple and it'll just be too much. So uh, I have my hue at zero and I have a plus 5%. So it's at 55% for digital vibrance for my setting here. The next thing that we'll go down to is rotate display. If you guys are running, like if you guys are a streamer and you have a chat set up and you have a monitor that's turned like this, this is where you enable portrait mode and you can turn your display so that you can read, you know, huge things or if you're coding or whatever, you can have that on that display that's over there. HDPC st uh, status is really ne negligible. We don't need to talk about that. Set up digital audio. Um, this is, we don't need to talk about this either. This is if you guys are running HDMI and you have uh, audio that's coming out of your monitor, best thing to do again is be gaming on headphones. Uh, adjust desktop size and position. Now, you guys definitely want this to be no scaling checked. Do not have aspect ratio or full screen. You'll incur a little bit of latency because your graphics card then will have to incur scaling, okay? It's going to have to scale. I have a pretty powerful graphics card for the little 1080p high FPS games that I play, so selecting no scaling means that the graphics card doesn't have to worry about it. I'm set at a 1080p resolution. It just pushes 1080p with no scaling to my monitor perform scaling on. Now, this is where we were talking about earlier. If you wanted to perform the scaling on your monitor, you will get lower latency input if the monitor is scaling and you have 144 or 240 hertz or 164, 165 hertz monitor or even a 360. You could perform the scaling on your display. In order to do that though, you will have to turn on uh, G-Sync on your monitor disable it within NVIDIA control panel and then restart your computer. After you restart your computer, you will have the option to um, perform scaling on your display. Me, I just go ahead and perform scaling on my GPU because I don't have scaling at all anyways. And then down here, this is where if you are playing games and they're looking crazy or whatever it is, you're having problems launching them, you could override the scaling mode set by games and programs, set at 1920 by 1080, and then you set your refresh rate right here, click apply and your settings will be set. Set up multiple displays. This is where you can go ahead and move multiple displays around. You can set up different things, having them above and below. You can set them like this. You can set it up just to where your, your mouse, when it drags from one monitor to another, even if they're at different heights or different sizes, you can get it to where they will be pretty close to each other by setting up the size and the way that your monitors work like this. So if I move mine kind of to about right here, yeah, it's pretty close, that's pretty close. We go down just a little bit right there. Oh, that's that's perfect. See right there is perfect. And then no, I don't want to apply these settings. You guys will want to apply your settings with everything that you do. So anytime that it asks you to apply your settings, definitely apply your settings before you move on to the next step. Now in the video settings here, it's going to say adjust video color settings. 
again, you don't want to use stock settings. You want to use your graphics cards, um, NVIDIA settings. They'll go ahead and click this dot right here. Saturation, you could turn this up and down. This is going to work in conjunction with the digital vibrance that you have in the other setting that we were playing around with uh, before. Uh, adjust video image settings. This is going to be, you want to use NVIDIA settings. You want to use the NVIDIA setting. Don't use the stock setting. De interlacing, make sure that you have this box checked. Click apply. After you guys click apply, go ahead and restart your computers. After you restart your computers, you guys are going to have the best visual fidelity that you can have. You figure out if you want to perform scaling on your graphics card or on your monitor. You now know how to enable the highest refresh rate or whatnot that's on there. You know what settings are best to have on, what are best to have off. And this is going to work for a high refresh rate gaming. This also works for, you know, MMOs or MOBAs or anything that's like that. So if this guy's helped any of you guys out, make sure that you definitely click all the little buttons that are around here. They're all there, you know, help a fella out. I tried to help you out. Don't cost you nothing to click the button. Help a fella out. I'm Lockout. Peace. Take your mouse and click the button, won't you subscribe to me? Lockouts providing the content that you see. I'm bitching to stimulate your mind, one minute at a time.